Good morning, everybody, all the participants. Thank you very much uh, to join this first webinar that we are organizing under the context of, of Rojep uh, project. My name is Daniel. I work uh, also at, at Rojep. I will give some I will present some information about the, the webinar. So we will have a, a presentation of, a, of about 30 minutes and then a questions and answer session of 15, 20 minutes. Um, during, this, during the time of the presentation, you can uh, ask a question. So to do that, you have to select the, quest, the questions pane that you will see on your screen and type in uh, your question. We will be collecting the questions. And so at the end, we will present to the, to the panelists and they will reply. Uh, remember that you will also re receive an, uh, an email after the webinar, one hour after the webinar, to, with a link, with a survey that we have prepared with uh, some short questions. And uh, also you will receive the presentation by email after the webinar. And finally, remember that we are also recording this, uh, this uh, webinar and uh, we will publish in the YouTube ICRE channel and also in the Ecorex uh, website. So everybody will be able to, to see again the, the video of the, the webinar. And uh, a reminder to the presenters, to the panelists, please try to, when you speak, to, to speak slowly because this is a internet uh, connection. So everybody is joining from different countries. So try to have this in mind and speak a little bit uh, slowly. So I'm going to pass the, the word to my colleague, Sire. Siret, please. Uh, is uh, you can you can go ahead. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first webinar organized in the framework of the Entrepreneurship Technical Support Facility under the Regional of Grid Electrification Project. I'm happy to see that many of you have joined this first webinar. And I would like to say a big thank you to SolarWorks, Konja and Jeff, for being the first company to host us in the webinar. I believe that um, the entrepreneurs that are online will find the webinar very interesting and we could um, continue to support the interaction between SolarWorks and the entrepreneurs for the benefit of our populations. So good luck and have a great webinar. I'll be here. Okay, thank you. So I, I take over from Sire. Thanks a lot. Uh, this is uh, Georg Heinemann. I'm calling in from SolarWorks. Um, me and Konja, we will do the webinar today. And first of all, thank you very much to Daniel and also to Sire to uh, give us this opportunity and to take us uh, through this session. Um, let me give you first a a brief overview uh, of our webinar. Can you, uh, Daniel, can you pass on to the next slide, please? Great, so me is Georg Heinemann and uh, my colleague is Konja Konrad and we give a, the title of the webinar is Next Generation Microgrid and Solar Home. So we will actually introduce a little bit the sector of solar home systems and also um, the connection to, to mini or microgrids, and then we also introduce uh, solar works in our products. Yeah, next slide, please. 
Um, exactly. So um, the, the sector uh, is um, more or less, I think, clear. We will have a focus on pay as you go, and then uh, we we give you an overview of our product range. And what we find also important is to give you some use cases so you can see how you can incorporate the product range in, in your portfolio, but also how um, how this uh, how our products can be used in the field and, and practice. And then we give some details about um, the potential partnership with us because we are actively looking now for distributors in West Africa and um, we will explore this together with you and then also have time for questions in the end. Yeah. Great. But first, um, let us introduce ourselves and maybe um, uh, next slide. Yeah, Conja, can you quickly come in for a brief introduction of, on your side? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, to speak here. Uh, as you can see from the slide, um, I'm now since over five years working in the solar home business um, in different countries around uh, East and uh, West uh, Africa. Um, my background is in environmental engineering and during my time in East Africa, I was mostly focusing on operations and yeah, I'd like to share some uh, insights I gained from this time and yeah, happy to be here. Uh, okay, great. Thank you, Konja. He, you missed uh, the important fact that you, you're based in Uganda now and you're uh, also available for, for travels to West Africa. So you just, as a background, we are like um, also trying to, to be more decentralized. We are based in Berlin, but um, Konja is our focal point in East Africa, but with also some responsibilities in, in West Africa. So he will be your, your contact point. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I just felt too quickly. So myself, I'm COO of SolarWorks. Actually, I have worked with Barefoot Power in Uganda before. That was actually my starting point in 2010. I was quite um, one of the pioneers. I think I didn't, uh, I didn't find or started Barefoot Power there. These two Australian guys, they started already in 2006, but um, I joined them in 2010 and I worked for I'm in Uganda, and then I started the distribution business in in Rwanda, and I also worked for them in Burundi and DRC in um, in Congo. And so I, I know the distribution business, but now I have moved back to Berlin. I worked as a global sales manager there for a sensor company, for a German sensor company, and now I joined SolarWorks to to do operations, but also or mainly business development and sales working with the distributors on a global level, mainly in Africa. Thanks. Next slide, please. Yes, so um, as I said, SolarWorks is uh, based in Berlin. We are actually started in, in 2017. We are based in Berlin in Siemensstadt, which is basically um, a part of Berlin with uh, Siemens, where Siemens has its uh, headquarters and since then, it has built kind of a, a small city within the city of Berlin. So there are a couple of uh, factories from Siemens and also uh, a co-working space and digital hub. So uh, as a as a next uh, generation solar company, we are part of this hub and um, we we benefit from the infrastructure and also from the exchange with them. And we we started our company in 2017 to to build a new set of solar systems. So we, we saw at Movisol and Barefoot Power different technologies, but our founders, Felix and Jacob, they're engineers and they wanted to build a next generation, a more advanced system, which is um, helping access to energy, especially for productive use appliances and bigger appliances like um, fridges or, um, or solar water pumps, but also for milling devices and so on. Um, our strategy is more like a B2B business model. So we are clearly a manufacturer. We want to focus on R&D, so on the research and development of the products, but not on the distribution. Distribution is um, carried out by our dealers and partners. So we want to, to find local partners in every country in order to, 
um, to build um, to build our pipeline and our presence in the market. So I called it actually 5454 sales strategy, which is quite optimistic. Um, I mean, our our main focus is the African continent, and 54 countries in Africa are there. So we want to have actually 54 distributors at some point in Africa, which is a bit optimistic. And I think some countries are not uh, not really um, our focus area, but you, just to give an, you an idea, so we, we really want to build a, a huge network of, of dealers and distributors in order to, to market our products and to bring them uh, to the end users. Um, in 2018, we, we started our distribution in Cameroon and Senegal quite successfully. We have like uh, now um, brought out our, our Solego unit. We have um, tested the product. We have um, onboarded two distributors in Cameroon and Senegal, um, and that worked quite well. We're confident um, we actually had a process of uh, being there for two months, like our team members. Um, Konja was there in Cameroon and in Senegal, Felix went and Alex. So we, we really um, became part of the distributor. We onboarded them, we supported them with um, um, with the operations, with the, the technical trainings and so on. So they, it really kicked off and we have now more than um, 100 units in the field working quite well. So it confirmed that our prototype and the first production batch went well. Now in 2019, we are continuing our operations in Cameroon and Senegal, but also expanding to East Africa. Therefore, Conja is also in Uganda. We are actually starting in the next months in Zambia, Uganda, and Tanzania, our partnerships. And but we are also looking at West Africa. Um, we have um, achieved to to win a couple of grants and awards in the meantime. So last year it was a digital storage award. We are part of the um, Empower Billion Lives competition from IEE, which is actually um, a, a global round several regional rounds and the global round will be in, in in Baltimore in September where we will present our microgrid ideas so that's the, the next step we do after our Solego system we will um, launch the microgrid and we part of this uh, is a competition with Empower Building Life so we won the first round the regional round we will pilot in Tanzania and then we, we, we present the final re results in, in Baltimore in September. We also part of the um, selection of the TIA Pop Diffit grant and um, there are a couple of other grants and awards so just can check it out on our website on, on solarworks.io. Next, next slide please. Yeah, so the sector, the pay-as-you-go sector um, is um, next slide please. This is our next session. And I mean, we know we know the, the situation. So the situation is that um, there's still more than one billion people without access to electricity. So this is a, an example from Senegal, where you have a, a, a trading center, a typical trading center, with a lot of activity. You see cars. You see, I think, in, um, a couple of uh, trading spots uh, with different goods, but. There's no electricity, the electricity grid is far away. And we want to change that, especially in these trading spots, that there's productive use of electricity for helping people to, to sell their goods also or to, to process and to enhance their goods. Next next slide, please. Yes, and this is giving you a background on our objective. We have um, the sustainable development goal number seven on our mission. And of course, there are different ways of access to energy and the World Bank is measuring it in four tiers. So I think most of the common products in the market are in tier one or in tier four. Tier one means you get a basic solar system for lighting and phone charging. Tier four means you have a full access to, to the grid. So if you have national uh, grid or you're on grid, and in the, in the middle, there's a challenge. We really want to to enable our users so that they can really advance um, their access, that they can start with a small system, and then due to our modularity, they can climb the ladder and build slowly their access to, to electricity. So 
tier two would be a solar home system with television. So it's more like 50 watt or 100 watt solar panel and then 80 watt hour solar battery. And then you build it constantly like 200 watt or maybe a kilowatt to, to run larger appliances like an irrigation pump or a fridge up to a microgrid approach. Yeah, next slide, please. Hmm. All right, yeah, thanks. There's there's some noise in the background. Um, let me see if I can I can uh, it's um, it's not so easy to change it, but I I will see. Um yeah, so the next thing is um, the market data. So we have um, the solar home system market built here, which is actually um, given um, in, in two ways. So we have one table of the gross rates. Yeah, so maybe if it's too much noise, we can just switch it. Um, I think here's a problem. Um, with my room, um, so Conja, maybe you can just take over and I, I unmute me. Uh, unmute me, so then I can see if I can see uh, find a more quiet room here. Yeah, it's a uh, the problem is that I'm not um, in the room on myself and yeah. So Conja, maybe you take over. We just do it quickly. I think you know the presentation. Yes, uh, thank you, Georg, uh, for the introduction. Um, I think what um, should be displayed here is like the big growth of um, uh, the solar home system market in general and the great potential of the solar home system market in general in this uh, sub-Saharan Africa. And um, yeah, there are like a couple of reasons of like why the solar home system market is growing so rapidly. Perhaps you can change to the next slide. Um, there are like certain advantages basically of the solar home system and um, besides um, sorry can you yeah um, besides that um, they, uh, the technology is really simple it's also quite um, easy to apply it to electrify basically rural communities um, Compared to other technologies like mini grids or in general grid connection, for the solar home system, you don't need like a big plan radius. Eh? So you can basically um, plan like, okay, which city or like which um, town you want to electrify and have a relatively small investment um, volume and can deploy certain solar home systems to a market and um, yeah, electrify the community. Um, compared to mini grids, the costs are like dramatically smaller. And also the installation of the system doesn't need much technical skills. Most of the solar home systems are actually plug and play. And depending on the demands of the customers or of the community, um, they're quite easy to, um, yeah, demo, to, to, to demonize. Um, if you now combine, combine um, this solar home system technology, uh, with a pay-as-you-go model, um, you make it even available for like small incomes users to purchase this technology. Uh, if you now slide to the next one, um, the the pay-as-you-go model. I mean, I saw from the list of uh, the participants that it's already like some of you already are familiar with this model, um, but perhaps for the ones who are not, just to explain it in a few words. And the idea is basically of this pay-as-you-go model is to cut down the whole cost of the product into small installments. And depending on the model you choose, rent to own or pay-as-you-go, um, the customer will pay back the whole amount um, uh, of the device over time. Um, most of the companies basically um, are using at the moment this rent to own model, um, but still call it pay-as-you-go. The difference is basically that uh, in the pay-as-you-go model, uh, you never own a system. You have to pay like an initial payment and then pay for the time or for the amount of units you use uh, for the system until it unlocks again. When you, went to, when you go for the rent-to-own model, 
um, the idea is that the customer pays off a credit. So the customer um, pays, a, I don't know, 20% initial payment, and then over a defined, defined time of um, period of time, the customer basically pays off the system until he owns the system. Um, there are like yeah, seven advantages for the rent to own model. Um, when I see from the history, like six years ago or seven years ago, and pay as you go was even more used. But at the moment, I think rent to own is a model which most of the um, companies prefer. Um, the backbone of both of these models is basically the token communication, so that you have basically a back end a database which is collecting all of the payments done by the customer, which generates then a token to the specific customer to unlock the system for a certain time period. Um, to handle this token communication and also at other services, there are certain platforms which uh, was now um, yeah, established in the last years and are used by most of the big distributors. Just to name a few, you see RPG, Solaris, Offgrid, Angaza, and Lumeta. And what, um, or Solcom Tech, what these, what these um, databases basically are doing is to also add other tools to this token communication. So you can, uh, in the databases, also manage your inventory. Since the database already knows which customer has what kind of units, and you know what you have in the stock, doing new cells, you can deduct these kind of appliances or systems from your stock, and the database combine all of this in one big tool. Also, contractor management or basically just loan, um, loan portfolio overviews are provided by these kind of um, yeah, databases. Um, it's not necessarily to, to have these databases, but when you go like to bigger amounts of about 1,000 systems, or more than 500 systems, these tools can really simplify procedures in your company and help you to manage your operations. Um, next slide. Um, perhaps just from the experience, um, to share some of our experience, there are like, we identified certain special specific challenges in the solar home market, um, which is of course connected with financing. Um, I think all of the businesses always need finance. But especially the long repayment periods create needs for like always ensure that the company has cash, has a cash flow and that you actually tap off new investments in order to purchase new systems. Um, then the other challenge to, um, results from the idea that you when you do the pay as you go business you're actually selling credits and not just like products. And most of the agents and um, the sales force are yeah, trained to make most sales as possible, and um, which is not really applying for the solar home business market, um, because it is more important to have quality sales um, than quantity than the quantity. Um, if you sell a lot of systems, but the customers at the end are not satisfied with the system, they're not willing to pay back the system, and you have like a whole high default rate, and every default rate about 10% will probably result into like a bankrupt of your business. Mm. And there are other yeah, challenges, I would say, like the customer, um, the, the, the changing demand um, of the customers. Um, during the first electrification, often people just want to have light or phone charging, perhaps to, to also have a radio. But after a certain while, already like they want to have basically um, bigger appliances, like TVs um, or using even inverters, um, much more light. Um, so the problem of solar home systems might is mostly that you basically design a solar home system for certain appliances. So if you now sold a solar home system and which is designed for small lights in order to keep the cost low, but then the customer wants to basically also use a TV, um, the customer is not able to use the same system to yeah, serve his own demand, his new demand, and then the old system gets some kind of useless or like it's uninterested, um, uninteresting for the customer and he's not so likely to pay back actually the credit of the system. Um, another challenge, um, especially in the solar home system market, is due to the last mile distribution. Um, we're often talking about really remote areas. Of course, you can also find customers within um, the country, uh, within the city areas, um, in the outskirts, but the main volume or like the main potential of the market is in the rural areas. So you need to set up a certain service structure to service the system. Customers will never pay back the system, which is not working. 
so this to handle these contractors and also vendors which are close to the customer um yeah create a lot of costs so what we did with SolarWorks, we thought about like okay how can we actually yeah minimize these kind of challenges and problems arising from these particular points um so that's why we actually created um our Solevo system um if you now switch perhaps so basically what we did and uh the um, as you can see from the next slide um we created a quite compact solar home system can you switch to the next slide so um here you see basically our yeah okay um <laughs> Uh, we jumped already one. So what we did with this one product we, um, we we designed, we actually are able to serve different customer segments. So um, we basically can bundle the product just to be used as a single simple light system and phone charging system, but also to connect radios, TVs. But by stacking the different units on top of each other and uh, using the modularity, you can also power bigger appliances like water pumps, uh, angle grinder, or like uh, grinding machines, irons. Um, so perhaps to the unique selling point of this product, you can switch to the next one. So what is so special about this uh, solar home system? Eh? I mean, you can already, as I already mentioned, the modularity gives a certain advantage, not only for the end customer, but also for the distributor. It was really important for us doing the design of the system to consider both customers as well the entrepreneur distributor and the end customer and solve their problems um, so as already mentioned one problem during the sale is basically the changing customer demands um, from like just simple lighting systems um, small appliances to bigger appliances by stacking these units on top of each other you basically are um, able to increase your capacity, battery capacity as well as your output capacity of the system um, after a certain time without purchasing a new system. So you just need one single device to serve different customer segments. And this is of course really makes the, um, also the distribution of the distributor simple to have only one product in your, in your portfolio. Um, as already mentioned, you not only by stacking the different units on top of each other, you not only gain um, or increase the battery capacity, but you also increase the output, which enables you to power basically bigger machines. Um, one unit provide 150 watts, stack two on top of each other, you already have 300 watts, so you can be, go easily above 600 watt, um, up to one kilowatt, machines can be powered. So this enables the customer to also using drilling machines, irrigation pumps, um, yeah. So actually they can use um, hair cutters, they can use appliances which generate income. And as soon as they generate income, it's also a benefit for the distributor because the customer is not only um, in, uh, willing to pay back, is able to pay back the system because he's generating income out of it, but also willing or like more interested to pay back because if he's not paying back the system and the system locks, he will not have income anymore so this really helps the point of the loan portfolio management um, for the distributors and um, yeah for the whole customer segment and um, then we have like some special gimmicks, uh, gimmicks as for example the audio output so the system is communicating with you um, through voice and not using displays or lights which makes it better for, for the end user to understand what the system now wants to communicate with the customer and um, the system is pegged already as already mentioned there are certain different platforms which are handling the token generation um, we are actually comfortable with all of them and of course the system is plug and play um, one other unique thing I think from SolarWorks is that we also really look a lot on this onboarding um, process. Um, as Georg already mentioned, um, our team were flying to Senegal, we myself spent two months in Cameroon. So we really make sure that actually our distributor is able to understand uh, the technology to um, also perhaps support them a bit with operational um, ideas or like um, yeah, best practice models from other countries. Um, and yeah, of course, also helping um, if possible with the financing to find new investors um, or like for grant applications. 
Um, if you switch to the next one, we can basically see Um, yeah, our perhaps another word to our to our integrated uh, backend solution already. Um, as already mentioned, these tools like Solaris Pay G and these platforms for the token generation are really helpful, but not always are interesting for like small entrepreneurs or small distributors who just having like one two hundred systems in the field and try to manage them. So what we already tried is to make like a basic backend solution, which is able to generate tokens and communicate um, with the systems and generate them, but also to give you like a monitoring tool so that our systems can be equipped basically with a GSM module and which provides to live data of the system. This helps you doing maintenance processes. So when a customer is complaining that the system is not working properly, you can actually see, okay, what is the current status of the system? How much energy from the panel came in? How much energy was taken out? Uh, what is the temperature, et cetera, et cetera. So it helps you actually to remote troubleshoot and yeah, identify actually customer behaviors and to see if the system is uh, right, um, is, is the system is right dimensioned for the customer. Um, uh, when you now um, we try to um, in the next slide actually uh, I show you like exactly how these special features will target some challenges. Um, can you skip? As already mentioned, um, the last mile distribution um, is uh, always a problem. So when we're talking about like how do we bring the, the systems to the field? Um, in my current companies, I was working. We had like 200 watt panels. We had like these. these um, lead acid batteries, which are really heavy and so on. And normally when we're talking about this um, rural communities, motorbikes are the only mean of, means of transport. So by making the system so compact that it's actually not much bigger than a one liter juice box and really easy, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's really easy to maneuver it. And um, also that we actually just choose a 50 watt panel and not, oh, not make the panel bigger, enables the customer to even install it on his own. To bring a 200 watt panel to the roof is completely something completely different than a 50 watt panel. Um, also, you can transport it on a motorbike. Yeah? The lithium iron uh, phosphate battery technology basically um, yeah, makes the system really light, and the plug and play design makes it possible for everybody in the last village. You just actually can send it with a motorbike, and the customer can install it on their own by only using a hammer. Um, another advantage um, of the system is basically the audio interface again. Um, when you go to the next slide, we found out that normally customers, even though you put like four lights and two lights of them showing that the battery strength is just 50%, it's, it's, yeah, it can be misunderstood by a lot of customers. So by using an uh, audio interface, we, make it, we ensure that even the, the kids or the, the data and the, the, the grandma in the house is understanding what the system wants. If they're short circuit, if the system locks down because it's not paid, or if it's just um, empty of battery. Um, we had created some kind of system that we can already integrate local languages by only recording 300 different phrases. So that's why we already have Wolof, we have uh, Fulde, we have Swahili. Um, this really helps to, to, uh, to, to, to improve the communication between the system and the users in the communities. And yeah, it just gives a really nice atmosphere. Um, then uh, the, another point perhaps to the modularity is like the logistic, um, which is quite improved. Normally, when you want to address different customer segments from Pico Light up to a TV system, you already need to have at least two different systems because Either it's oversized or it's undersized. With this modularity, it's really easy basically to just have like, it, you just have one product you need to distribute to your different vendors, which yeah, reduces the stock, the stock, the, the stock space uh, dramatically. Um, but also other things like um, refurbishment, the reprocessing of systems, and then to, up, to refurbish them again, to sell them again, it's really simple because you just need certain spare parts for the whole process. You don't have like every time different products. Same basically to also marketing and sales, eh? to create prices, uh, to make one customer education for one product um, is quite simplified by this process. Um, but one of the biggest advantages definitely is the productive use aspect. Um, with this high power port, when you go to the next slide, 
um, you enable customers to take out a lot of energy. Even the smallest system already with the seven USB port enables customer to charge phones and earn some income with it. But by enabling customers to generate income through the machine, we also have like a big palette of uh, appliances. Um, you 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 enable you, you you make sure that the customer is paying back your loan default rate. And this is one of the biggest problems, I think, in the solar home system industry, as we see it at the moment, even the giants, um, big companies having problems um, to, to, have, to yeah, finance the operations is because the systems are going default. But if customers have access to it, um, can, can generate income, they want to, pay, we want to uh, repay the, the system, and yeah, they just have a bigger need for it. Um, we can see it from our use cases. Um, you can you switch to the use cases um so we 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 already as um Georg already mentioned we started some small pilots in uh, tanzania with uh, shop owners for example just for charging their phones they could extend their their time um, of, for opening the shop because they had light and of course also attract people when you now even at the fridge um, you have cold drinks um yeah you're more likely to sell more and also are able to pay back the system. Um, same for our water pump system. Eh? We we could we were able to source basically a water pump um, which only works on 12 volts, which you can see on the next slide, and which is able to provide 2,500 liters per day. And even using our small unit, but adding two panels to it, you can run the device over daytime using the the, the sun energy. I don't need to like make a big battery because you just want to irrigate during daytime. Um, also for the house use, um, I think um, the advantages of the system with this high power port is able basically to provide you uh, to, to, to connect an inverter. Um, as you can see from the next slide, yeah, from this slide, um, you, you have often, you always try to sell DC products and low consumption devices in order to work with the solar home system, but you will always have like uh, the seven customers who want to use their old devices, their old TV, by connecting an inverter, they can use it. And by adding another unit, you ensure that they have enough battery capacity to also run the devices for a sufficient time. Um, the last uh, use case I wanted to show you is um, a small uh, former farmer, basically, in um, North Cameroon. Um, he's now giving fuel to his sons and um, yeah, we had, just had like a big money and wanted to make his own business. So we sold him this smaller unit and he's using it actually at the daytime to charge phones, making his hair cutting business at night because of security reasons. He has to take the system to his home, but there he can use it for life. And he earns basically more money than he has to pay back every day. So after yeah half a year, um, one year, the system will be paid off and he just makes profit without paying back any loan anymore. Um, so, yeah, I think this is quite unique you have like with the system. And now Georg will tell you a bit more about like uh, what we have in the pipeline and what is the idea for the new future. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Konja. Uh, I hope the sound is now better. I, I moved actually to another room. Um, yeah, the pipeline is the microgrid I already mentioned. Let me go quickly through it. I think we are a little bit over time, but I hope you stay tuned and we we are just um, about there. So the microgrid idea is that there are mini grids and their solar home systems both have their challenges. The, micro, the mini grids are most of the times quite expensive. They're very stable um, in the way that um, you can't really add or, or decrease the power and also the number of households and solar home systems have the limit of, um, of um, yeah, limited uh, capacity and uh, not the ability to, to run bigger or community-based um, energy systems. So we want to bring both together, interconnect solar home systems, and um, uh, together to, to form a mini grid or micro grid, and um, also on pay go basis. Maybe, next slide, please. Exactly, so this is, a, it's a good overview. You see here that um, we work with a couple of households for this smart microgrid. They can all uh, be interconnected using their own solar home systems. 
then you have a bi-directional um, exchange. So the users of the households, they can either draw electricity from the other households, so they get extra electricity from their own devices, or they can sell, they can um, produce electricity and feed into the microgrid and then um, give others, other households opportunity. And together they can, um, they can um, run also a community hall or maybe a community uh, water filter system or so on. And um, it is, of course, you have being like in a community organized, you can save costs. You have um, the opportunity to get extra money by buying or selling electricity. And also um, you have, um, due to the swarm grid approach, you have um, the, 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 the opportunity to, um, to run higher, higher devices, like, as I said, like water filter systems and so on. But this is in the pipeline. As I said, we are, we are running a test in, in August in, in Tanzania, and then we, we, we see um, how it goes from there. But uh, I think it will be commercially available before the end of the year or next year. Next uh, slide, please. Exactly. So, coming to to our last point, uh, so, uh, the partnership. So this is again uh, the B2B model we are we are following. You see the solar works as a manufacturer on this slide. You see the distributor and the customer, and of course the distributor is taking over the distribution, the sales of the system on a pay-as-you-go basis or over-the-counter sale OTC, and um, they either get cash or mobile money from the customer. And we provide the systems to the distributor through our factory. We have manufacturing in China and we do all the logistics and also we add onboarding and training. And, and so um, there, this is uh, more or less uh, the, the replication of the B2B model of the Senegal and Cameroon pilot. And we want to do it as well with other countries. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, the competition is there that we, we are actually um, starting in the middle, so in the business case, around 20 or 50 watt. I think the, the, the below 20 watt solar systems are quite crowded in the market space. I mean, everyone knows um, MCOPA in East Africa, but also Steelite is quite popular, or NIWA and so on. But we really start with 50 watt solar panels or uh, system size, and then we go further and further, and you see that in these large scale system that there's basically not not a lot or hardly no competition okay next slide please yeah and um, to come to our last slide we we want to um, to offer you a partnership we we look for um, partners in the solar sector for sure and um, we offer as as we have introduced ourselves uh, a quite uh, uh, experienced um, team and uh, and also um, the background so we work with Movisol which what is which is one of the biggest pay go providers we have this background we know how the market works and we have a combined um, experience of more than 20 years so we see that we can really uh, build partnerships and distribution with our experience and add on um, uh, this this kind of um, added value to the distributors. Secondly, we have a quite a, an attractive product. So uh, as I said, or as we have seen, the Solego is quite unchallenged in the segment from 100 watt onwards, and it's the modularity which is the first unique selling point. So um, we have the opportunity to scale and uh, to grow with the customer. And that's quite attractive, especially if you want to keep the cost on, on, on a moderate level. And then the next point would be the, the second unique selling point is a microgrid, which we will have to, which we can offer next year. Um, yeah, so this is this was very quick. Um, we, um, Conja is our point of contact. We are still here for, for questions. So I think I wrap up here. We have, um, had a little bit of uh, noise in the background. Sorry again, I'm, I'm on a conference actually. Uh, they assigned me a room where they started suddenly to to prepare for lunch. I hope you're still there and you didn't go for lunch, but now I'm in a different room. So I think noise is better. 
we are still here for questions. Thanks a lot for your attention. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to, to, to further discussions. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. So let's, let's move to the questions and answer session. Uh, we have received some questions, so I will start uh, by the first one, which is a technical question. The question is, what type of battery does the solar home system inverter use? Um, it's a lithium ion phosphate battery. Um, perhaps, Georg, I will ask, we can make, I take this one, you take the next one. Um, it's a lithium ion phosphate battery. Um, the reason why we went away from uh, lead acid batteries is, as I already mentioned, um, the size. And even myself was like really involved in the recycling of uh, the lead acid batteries. And um, as we could identify, there were as basically two recycling plants in the whole of Africa. Um, so basically, at the moment, how lead acid batteries are treated after the lifespan is quite harmful for the environment. Um, even though lithium ion phosphate batteries also um, have problems to be recycled, but at least they don't harm the environment. And yeah, and of course, also because of uh, the, the, the cycle duration, um, yeah, we decided to use this kind of battery technology. And um, perhaps also interesting to mention to this is that we actually do active balancing in our system. So we are balancing between the different battery cells up and down, which of course yeah, increases the lifespan of the battery dramatically. And I think yeah, we are quite unique on the solar home system market that none of the other solar home systems actually doing this. So yeah, we expect to have a really long lasting battery. Thank you. Um, next question: How much does the sorry the, how much does the home payment cost before the pay uh, as you go model starts? Hmm? Uh, can you repeat it? So it, it means. How much, how much the, the system costs? Upfront payment cost before the pay as you go model starts. Oh, okay. So for the end user, I think. Huh? Um, that, that depends really on the case, I think. The, I mean, it, like a usual pay as you go contract has definitely a, a down payment scheme. Um, you can always, I mean, Conja, how, how do you do it in Cameroon? I mean, I mean, it, it really depends, it, really. It, as yeah, as as as, as Georg was saying, like it, it depends a bit on like the repayment period. Um, normally, um, I would say like most of the companies are taking like twenty percent of the down payment, um, or like the whole system cost as initial payment to show like the commitment of the customer. But um, I think there's also a lot of um, yeah changes at the moment. Um, since this whole, a lot of these payment models were developed or like, for my opinion, quite in the Western phase to say like, okay, every customer has to pay after one month and after another month makes the next payment. It's like due to the fact that normally you think like, okay, these persons have normal income, but then we're talking about farmers and other um, yeah, uh, like government employees and so on. And government employees are getting monthly, but normally, there's money at a certain point available and then for a long time not eh? because you have to pay school fees or like just because you were harvesting or had to pay new seats. So ideas of saying like, okay, let's make three payments for the next whole eight months and you will start with 40%, then you make 20% and then you make another 40% at the end or something like this um, are also like more and more like yeah, happening and they are also successful. but. About the initial payment, I think 20% is a good good rule of sum, which should be shown as a commitment from the customer. I hope this is like what's okay. the question or I answered the question. Um, the next question is related to productive uses. It says for hair stylist, what tire can be used? Uh, tire or what yeah, kind of energy, energy tire? Um, 
I think, I mean, that depends very much on, on the equipment you use, but um, it's, it's actually a, already a, a basic solar lighting system with a 50 watt solar panel. So tier two um, can serve um, at least two, maybe even three or four hair cutting machines. And then um, you, 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 um, you can run this system for a couple of hours during the day um, and especially at night and then that, that serves. So that's, um, that would be our Solego 80, no, 160 watt hour system, which we offer, but with a 50 watt solar panel. Uh, one more, please. How much does each module cost for a Pico solar system? Okay. Um, um, I think uh, concerning. Yeah. Sorry, take yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, about prices, we we basically decided, or like um, we would share them afterwards when when. Uh, you guys are interested, then we would share the prices separate. Um, but in general, there's always we are selling the stuff FOB China, eh? so roughly like um, a small uh, system unit. Um, it's about like um, 100 uh, with lights, 150 with this panel, like 180 dollars. But the biggest cost actually starts to be created during during the import. Uh, um, Doing, doing the import, eh? so it really depends a bit on your country-specific regulations concerning the import. Often, solar products can be free, and um, yeah, you don't have to pay taxes, and clear, uh, the clearance is quite easy. In other countries, you have to pay like 100% on top, and this is really what at the end terminates the price, I would say. But yeah, if you want to have like the price list, um, yeah, just ping us, um, just write me an email, and I will send you uh, a more detailed catalog with what kind of appliances we have uh, and yeah what are the costs of the different systems but yeah as i said 100 uh, 150 um, uh, for a normal tv system i would estimate something like 300 dollars um, yeah with lights cables and etc okay thank you um, next question what support do you offer uh, the distributor customer in times when the system have a problem? Do you offer any form of custom, customer service or system maintenance in the country? Yeah, I can. I think I can take that, Conjo. So um, first of all, I think um, we mentioned at the beginning that we offer the remote uh, control opportunity. So due to the um, the GPS module we can check on the system and you can actually see different data like the battery um, usage and, and, and so on and the performance of the system. So that is the first way of, of handling any support that um, you can look at the data as a distributor. We can also support the distributor in analyzing this data so if there's a problem with the system we can share this information between each other and then we can see what, what is the problem with the system and, and so on. And the second step is that at the beginning, we, we give this onboarding process. So um, we, we have a certain period period with the distributor in order to, to train him and also to, to take him through the technicalities and also to do the maintenance of the system at, to, to, to a certain point. Huh? I mean, we have a warranty. We offer a warranty of two years and um, so if something is wrong with the system, we we replace it. So uh, there there are two ways to do it. Either he uses his own stock for replacing it, so um, or we we provide a, a set of spare parts, a set of spare systems, and then um, they um, they can replace it. In any case, we we offer this training at the beginning, the onboarding, and part of the onboarding is that. We uh, take the distributor and his team through the technical maintenance and after sales procedures so he can react quickly in the moment there's a problem with the system. And I think especially the GPIS function so that you have a um, back end software where you can take a look at the system, you can actually also do any um, pre um, 
like a proactive maintenance. So if, if there's something wrong already in the data, you can already go to the system or uh, call the customer in order to do the maintenance. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what we offer. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Let's go with two questions. What, saying, what we also what we also did. okay. Yep. Hmm. Questions from uh, oh, sorry, from Guinea Conakry. Uh, we have one one colleague from Woko Solar Guinea, we, which I guess is a, is a company. So the questions are: What is the maximum power you can provide? And if you are interested in the in the market in Guinea, in Guinea Conakry, and also what is the the, the full autonomy of your system? What can what uh, battery are you using? What is the life on it? And if he can have a price quote for um, for custom and poor taxes in Conakry. I think it's a really particular question. But it is clear the question? Mm, yeah, Georg, you want to take a take? So let's, mm, let's come again, start, sorry. Uh, what, what is the maximum power uh, you can provide and if you are interested in the market in Guinea, Guinea Conakry? So, okay, so, so basically, so, the system. <laughs> no. Connor, please take it. <laughs> okay, uh, so basically, the maximum output of the system, as I've already mentioned, is like one system can provide 150 watt output um, to the power port. Then we have also like um, small light ports at the back. But by stacking the system on top of each other, you increase actually the complete the, the total output. So. Um, you can easily reach uh, um, amounts to like 600 watts, uh, 750 watts. Um, at one kilowatt, definitely the system, just from the technical specs, is not possible to provide more because uh, the plug is not stable anymore. Um, but yeah, if you want to have systems in the one kilowatt section, you will need to wait for the grid model or like um, for like perhaps a different system. Um, if we are interested to go to Guinea, definitely. I mean, we are in general open for, for all markets, but the extent of support we can provide, um, if it's, for example, about the import of these things. Um, we have some knowledge there. We, we already know, like, I don't know, a container, a shared container with 100 systems, for example, costs around $1,500 to bring it to, um, to, to Africa West, as well as um, East is a bit cheaper. But how is this in particular cases then would need to be discussed and yeah, we are happy to support, but um, yeah, we are not now offering directly the clearance service within our company. Um, the, the other question is that was if, if, if you can have a, a price quote on cost and freight for the port in Conakry. Um, yeah, I think um, if he, he just uh, sends me an email and then we can discuss this uh, separate. Um, I, we, we don't have now all of the quotes uh, for all of the ports, but yeah, um, it's, it's, we, we can tell him ways how to find out and yeah, I have to see now in our list if we already have the price for this uh, okay. specific port transportation, but yeah, I would suggest to do this separately. Okay, let, let's go quick with a, with a really interesting question. It says, most of the rural communities depend on either farming and fishing occupation to generate funds, which are seasonal work. They don't have control over it. What happens if they default payments over the period agreed and not willing to pay? Who takes care of uh, mm. what happens? And the second question would be, who takes care of import cost if you want to be a distributor? Of, uh, sorry, what was the, the last part? Okay, so let's, let's let's first reply to the first one because they they are not in. in okay. Yeah. So the first one is is quite um, interesting indeed because that's uh, we see it everywhere actually, um, not only in East Africa but for sure definitely also in West Africa that users are in rural areas are often farmers and 
their seasonal activities and uh, seasonal activities are these farming activities or even school fees uh, that at some point there are school fees in the year and then suddenly there's no money available for other things like paying back the system um it's it's very much up to the distributor actually to 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 negotiate and to to find a good way to to manage these kinds of uh, let's say irregularities um the ideal case for sure is that you have a system for 500 700 dollars 20 percent is paid up front and the the remaining installments are paid on a regular basis ideally on a monthly basis over a period of two years three years um however this is probably the ideal case and it's not realistic so it is possible with your pay as you go management that you adapt this to the challenges of the rural uh, users and that you you adjust it so that would be uh, that's possible it's just that you have to look case by case how to to arrange it but um, it's not um, you can actually um, uh, let's say configure the system and the token in a way that um, that you can arrange for that, that you can make larger periods or, or smaller periods according to the need of the customer yeah. okay and the other question from this uh, colleague was who takes care of import cost if you want to be a distributor it's import huh? importation yes yeah oh, okay um that's that's the distributor's case i mean we help them with the logistics so we can arrange um shipping and also um, take them through the procedure of uh, putting the order and so on but in the moment um, the ship is on the way and it's reaching the port of destination um, all this um, uh, importation procedures uh, customs and so on that's very local um, and we are we are not knowledgeable in that so if we have experience with the country we can we might connect him to a, a clearing agent or we can share our knowledge but it is 100 percent actually the, the responsibility of the distributor to understand and to to get the clearing done because it's as we have experienced in several cases it's it's quite local and you have to really know the the local ways to to manage these kind of procedures yeah okay and uh, last question a uh, technical one which uh, which type of solar pump do you have sub submersible or surface pump hmm. Hmm. Kondra, it's your thing or you shall i take it I think he's, he's not there. Getting, uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the connection is a bit uh, hacking. Like, what kind of pump do we have? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, it's we we, we have like a, a, a twelve volt, um, and yeah, it, it can lift um, up to forty to to forty uh, meter and um, vertical vertical hub. Um, and runs about like when you're on full capacity, like about 70, 80, 80 watts. Hmm. Was this a question or like I was not... exactly? And it's it's, it's submergible, so we, we are offering a submergible pump up to 40 meters. Uh, I mean, the ideal case I think is 20 to 20, 30 meters, but I think the maximum height is, is 40 meters deep uh, depth, and yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so we we have to finish uh, here. Um, the presentation has been really interesting, and so we have had some questions. That means that it's a topic interesting. Um, so thank you, thank you very much from from our side uh, to the panelists. To the participants, remember that that uh, you will receive a survey after after this webinar.
So your your answers are really important for us. And maybe my colleague Sire wants uh, to add a final word also. Yes, hello. Um, thank you very much, Konja and Jeff, for this uh, presentation. I think from the questions you see that your technology seems to be uh, very interesting for the entrepreneurs who attended the webinar. Uh, for follow-ups, we will make sure that we circulate the contacts of um, all the entrepreneurs and other um, stakeholders who registered, because some of them are not uh, private sector stakeholders. We have some governmental agencies, uh, so some participants from governmental agencies who also um, attended the webinar. Now, uh, we, we will circulate the contacts and then so you can continue the conversation with them. Great. Yeah, um, also thank you from my side again for this opportunity and this nice session. Thanks a lot. <laughs>